Okay, in this video we're going to look at balance and symbol equations. If you're not confident writing symbol equations, then you should look at the previous couple of videos I made, uh, one called uh, writing formally for ionic compounds and the other writing symbol equations. Once you can do that, the final thing you need to be able to do with them is to make sure that they're balanced. Um, so we're going to have a look at that in this video. This is a skill that you start learning about in year eight and nine in school usually. Um, but one that you will definitely need to know for your exams, GCSE exams in year 10 and 11, and further if you do A-level as well. So it's a really important skill, but it's one that comes up in the exams all the time. Okay, let's have a look at a symbol equation. This is the symbol equation for magnesium chloride reacting with calcium to form calcium chloride and magnesium. Now, it's really important to understand that in a chemical reaction, you don't create anything new or destroy anything. Uh, you just have a rearrangement of atoms. So here we've got magnesium bonded to chlorine and calcium by itself. And after the reaction, we've got calcium bonded with chlorine and magnesium by itself. But we haven't created any new atoms or destroyed any atoms. We have just rearranged where the atoms are placed. So let's have a look with Lego bricks to see exactly what's happening here. If we use this brown block for magnesium and we need another brick for chlorine but there's two of them there's one magnesium and there's two chlorines so let's use these two small blue ones for chlorine so one magnesium two chlorine then we've got one calcium we'll use an orange brick for calcium here we've got one calcium and two lots of chlorine so we need one orange brick and we need two of our chlorines, which are the little blue ones. One, two. And here we've got one magnesium. Magnesium was brown, so we'll put one brown block there. Now, let's check, does this make sense? Is this just a rearrangement? One brown block before the reaction started, one brown block after. One orange block before, one orange block after. Two blue before, and two blue after. So this makes sense. Uh, you should think about a chemical reaction as like rearranging your bedroom. If you've got one bed, one wardrobe and one TV in your bedroom and you decide to have a shuffle around, you rearrange where the bed is, where the TV is, where the wardrobe is, it's not possible to rearrange your bedroom so that you've now got three wardrobes, one bed and no TV. It just doesn't make sense. And in a chemical reaction, that's all we're doing is shuffling the atoms around. They're changing places, but they're not being created or destroyed. Right, let's have a look at a second equation. This time we've got magnesium plus oxygen, O2, forms magnesium oxide. Okay, so let's see if this one's balanced and makes sense. Magnesium, we'll continue using a brown block. Oxygen, we'll use a um, dark blue block, but because it's O2, we need to have two of them. And magnesium oxide, that's one magnesium and one oxygen. So we'll take one brown block and one blue block. Okay, let's have a look and see if we have conserved the same number of atoms before the reaction as after the arrow, as after the reaction. So we've got one magnesium here, one brown block. After the arrow, one brown block. Before the arrow, two blue. After, one blue. So this is an example of an equation that's not balanced. It doesn't make sense. How can you start off with one brown and two blue and end up with one brown and only one blue? Where's the other blue block gone? It can't disappear. We can't create anything or destroy anything. So this is when we need to use um, our balancing equation skill. We need to change the ratio. In this reaction, it can't be a one magnesium to one O2 to form one MgO because it isn't balanced. If we've got two blue bricks here, we need to have two afterwards. Now there's only one thing you're allowed to do to balance an equation, and that is to put a multiplier, a number before, a reactant or before a product. So if we've got two blue bricks here and we need two here, we can put a big two in front of MgO. And that means we've got two times this. So we'll need another lot of MgO. So let's put another MgO there. Okay, let's see if it's balanced now. We've got one brown here and two brown after the arrow. We've got two blue before the arrow and two blue after the arrow. So it's still not balanced. We have the same number of blue bricks before and after the arrow, 
but we do not have the same number of brown bricks. So again, we need to change our ratio. We need to put a multiplier in. So I'm gonna put a big two in front of mg to say, okay, we must have two lots of mg wrapped with one lot of O2 to form two lots of MgO. Let's see if that makes sense. Before the arrow, we've got two brown. After the arrow, we've got two brown. Before the arrow, we've got two blue. And after the arrow, we've got one, two, blue. So this is how we balanced this equation. The top equation was already balanced, didn't need any big numbers adding to it. But the second equation was not balanced. We needed to change the ratio by putting big numbers in. Now, the number here should be a one. But in chemistry, we don't tend to write the one, we just leave it blank. What you need to make sure you don't do is put a zero there. So a zero here would mean no lots of this. So that wasn't there at all, and that doesn't make sense. So just leave this blank, and we know it's one lot of O2, two lots of Mg, and we produce two lots of MgO. Okay, so in your exam, you're not gonna have Lego bricks to play with. So let's have a look at another example and do it without the Lego bricks. Um, I've put a space before each reactant and before the product um, so that if we need to add numbers, we can put the numbers there. What I suggest you do to start checking whether an equation is balanced is write down the symbol of each element underneath the reaction arrow. So here we've got sodium plus chlorine forms sodium chloride. So my elements are just sodium and chlorine. And now you should add up how many sodiums are on the left, currently just one, and how many are on the right, just one, how many chlorines are left of the arrow, two, and on the right, one. Now, if these numbers are equal to each other, then it means you've got the same number of sodiums on the left and the right, and the same number of chlorines on the left and the right. And if the numbers are equal to each other, then it's balanced. But here, the numbers are not equal. The sodiums are balanced, but the chlorines are not. So this side does not have enough chlorines. So I'm gonna start by trying putting a two there. Now this two become, is a multiplier, so it's two lots of sodium chloride. So now on, on the right hand side, we don't have one sodium, we've got two sodiums. And we don't have one chlorine, we've got two chlorines. So it's, we've now balanced the chlorines, but now the sodiums are not balanced. So I can go back to this side and put a big two here, and that is a multiplier for the sodium, so two lots of sodium. I'll change this to a two, and now I've got two sodiums on the left, two on the right, two chlorines on the left, two chlorines on the right, so that's balanced. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Let's start in the same way by writing out the symbols of the elements underneath the arrow. In this equation, we've got magnesium plus HCl, hydrochloric acid, um, and this forms magnesium chloride and hydrogen. So our elements are Mg, magnesium, H, hydrogen, Cl for chlorine. So we've got three elements this time. Magnesium's on the left, we've got just one. Uh, magnesium's on the right, one. Hydrogen's on the left, we've got just one. On the right, we've got two. Chlorine's one on the left and two on the right. So this equation is not balanced. The magnesiums are balanced, but the hydrogens and chlorines are not balanced. So we start having a look at which side has not got enough of something. Well, the left side has not got enough hydrogens and it's not got enough chlorines. It needs another hydrogen and another chlorine. So if I put a two here, that will multiply the HCl by two. So instead of one hydrogen and one chlorine, We've now got two lots, so two hydrogens and two chlorines. And now I can see that my equation is balanced because I've got the same number of each element on each side. Okay, for this example, I'm gonna give um, a slightly trickier one, one that catches people's out in class. Uh, this time we've got aluminium reacting with bromine to form aluminium bromide. Um, but this time it's going to be slightly more difficult to balance. We'll start in the same way. Underneath the arrow, let's write out Al for aluminium, Br for bromine. They're the only two elements. And let's see how many we've got on each side. One aluminium on this side and one on this side. Two bromines on this side and three on this side. Right. 
which side has not got enough of something? Well, the left hand side has not got enough bromines. So we need to add a multiplier in there. So if I put a two, then we've got two lots of this, but this is already two bromines. So if you've got a number down here and here, you need to multiply them. So two lots of two bromines is two times two is four bromines. So we've now got four bromines on this side, but we've got three on this side. So now this side has not got enough bromines. So if we put a two here, then two lots of three bromines is two times three is six. So we've now got six bromines on this side. And now this side hasn't got enough bromines. So this is why sometimes in balancing equations, there can be a little bit of trial and error. We tried putting a two there and then we needed to put a two here. Now the two isn't big enough. So I'm going to change this number and I'm going to try putting a three there instead. Three lots of two bromines, three times two is six. And now I have enough bromines, but this two doesn't just multiply the bromines by two, it also multiplies the aluminiums by two. So I now have two times one aluminium is two, two times three bromines is six on this side. And on this side, I still have one aluminium and three times two bromines, which is six bromines. So to finish the equation off, I'll need to put a two in front of aluminium so that we have two aluminiums on this side, two on this side, three times two, six bromines on this side, and two times three, six bromines on this side. Have a go at a few questions, pause the video, and then unpause to see the answers.